The Fed has been casually, slowly, and in agonizing leisure increasing interest rates. Commercial banks usually follow suit by passing that off onto their customers. Increased rates on savings accounts means more people saving. That means more money in their pockets over time. But what happened this time around? You came here for the truth. Today, let's get into this as well as many more topics, a whole host of issues to discuss today. Let's begin right here. When you see the total deposits at the US commercial banks just continuing to rise, you would think that we have more money being earned in savings accounts. Each 25 BPS of foregone interest is costing depositors about $30 billion a year, all of which is flowing straight into the bottom line of the large banks. Now, for each 25 basis points that they have increased, the Federal Reserve is essentially giving that signal to the commercial banks that they can also follow suit. But that hasn't been the case. So people haven't been earning on their savings accounts as they would in the past. This is something very different than what we have seen, and it's not a good sign. Nearly $12 trillion are held in deposit at commercial banks. We are talking about a large sum of money that could be earning interest, that could be making its way onto the saver, which then, of course, would be spent into the economy. That doesn't happen now, at least not yet. And I don't know why other than to increase corporate profits. What else is new? Of course, banks don't want to raise deposit rates until they have to, though they tend to raise certain loan rates as soon as the Fed makes a move. They prefer to let the deposit rates lag, bolstering profits. That's what it's all about every single time around. And there's more to discuss here, but let's move on to the next issue because I have so many things to talk about here. Cash is king again. Enjoying a steady job market but reluctant to freely spend into the economy because of the uncertainty, a wide swath of middle class Americans are hoarding money in banks. Total bank deposits rose 6.6% last year to $10.7 trillion, extending steady growth seen in recent years. Deposits uh, as a percentage of the bank assets are 77% in the first quarter of 2017. Now, what we can see with the Federal Reserve is that they are seemingly going to continue to increase interest rates every so often at about 25 basis points. We had Canada following suit just recently, and you can see that this may be the same policy that's applied over the next little while, unless something changes within the economy or the, uh, you know, an official recession is declared or, or what have you. But we can see that this will probably continue. So when you look at interest rates, that is given by the Federal Reserve, by the central bank of that particular country. And then the commercial banks react accordingly. They borrow from the central bank. So the central bank is ultimately determining what happens with people's money. They can devalue it. They can decide to pull out liquidity. They can increase liquidity. They decide that. So it is very, very crucial to look at what the Federal Reserve or what the central bank is doing at any given time to be able to determine what will happen with inflation, deflation, and everything else down the line. Unfortunately, there seems to be a little disconnect here as the amount of deposits are increasing it is unfortunately not translating into more income for people. Now, while it might not be much, to your grandma, a few pennies might be a little beneficial. Monthly federal spending tops $400 billion for the first time. We are looking at mass quantities of money being spent right now. There is a huge deficit that is being created. 
when you think about the amount of spending that's taking place and then look at what it's spent on, it's absurd. They can never, ever go ahead and get rid of debt. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's impossible. Because of the way they spend, they need to continue to spend more into the future. Sure, you might have temporary declines, but long-term trend, spend, spend, spend. In San Francisco, family earning $138,000 may soon qualify for middle income affordable housing. Can you believe it? That's how expensive it has become. $138,000 $138,000 between two people and that's considered middle income affordable housing. I understand it's not low income, but still they're getting subsidies. They're being able to uh, basically, because the prices have gone so high, they're able to sort of get around on a t- some tax incentives or what have you. So That to me shows that it is extremely overvalued right now at this time. You don't want to have to have the government step in and make a rule or a law that prevents things from happening or anything like this. It shouldn't be like that. If it's like that, there's probably something else holding it up. The IMF, and I just did a video about Canada recently, but check this out. That while Canada's economy has regained momentum, housing imbalances have increased and uncertainty surrounding trade negotiations with the U.S. could hurt the recovery. And they're saying that yes, they did increase interest rates to 0.75% and it also cautioned against tightening. They're saying, whoa, 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 you can't tighten. Your guys aren't doing well enough. Don't do that. The IMF, the biz, and others have been warning about Canada's economy, saying you don't have the right to do this at this time. You're acting a little crazy. While the output gap has started to close, monetary policy should stay accommodative until signs of durable growth and higher inflation emerge. They're saying... Print more money, keep your interest rates down, keep everything flowing. Lots of tax breaks for the citizens, lots of free money, lots of free money, and wait it out because now is not the time to be increasing interest rates. You'll crash your economy. And remember, that's not me, that's the IMF. The economy has regained momentum momentum supported by the authority's proactive growth strategy, but complex adjustments are still at play. Talks about personal consumption is robust, businesses investment remains weak, non-energy exports have underperformed, and housing market imbalances have risen. And essentially, it goes on to talk about the, the chance of a recovery declining because they're increasing interest rates. That is not a good sign. They also say that there is less growth to come. So I do agree with them on this. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it is uh, really being looked at realistically. In fact, they just do what they want. It's all about saving face. It's all political. We know that despite what... Janet the Felon has said, take a look at this. I've covered this before, but as the time goes on, it becomes even more relevant. And what you're looking at, this being the cycles in the economic expansions in the U.S. And you'll see that the current one, 96 months, is number three. So they've already surpassed the 82 to 91 And it is climbing closer and closer to back in the 60s. And it won't be long before this becomes the longest economic expansion in history. And that will make people very, very rich if they know how to sell off in time and put put their wealth into another investment. But the point I'd like to make is that as we see... 
assets rising and rising and rising. And then we tend to see a parabolic turn right near the end. Every time that I've seen it, it always declines with extreme speed. Every time. It always goes down much, much faster than it came up. The question is, will you be able to time it? Are you going to be at the top? Or are you going to be at the bottom? When are you going to sell? Are you going to just wait? Are you going to hold on tight and hope that it comes back up? Well, that's up to you to decide. This is one thing that I, I wanted to note. One of the subscribers on this channel has talked about the fact that quite the opposite of this. Anyway, let's cover it here. Lightweight vehicle sales, auto light trucks in the millions of units. We are seeing this number declining. And this has taken place since the end of last year up until now. And I've covered these indicators before, how you can talk about the uh, basically the truck sales. And I would have to say that it seems like these numbers have declined, but in truth, this is something that is fluctuating all the time. We can never just take this for what it is. I mean, you can see the trend though, from 2014 on have, was an increase. So in the short term here, let's say six months, it has declined, but we'll see where it ends up. 21 to 34 year olds likely to make up the greatest share of US consumer default risk over the next 12 months. Now look at this, I've covered it on the channel before, student loans have gone insane. They are the biggest bubble right now. They've come out of nowhere seemingly, but it's, um, really showing us how we can have a bubble in any territory, any sector, there is the possibility of a bubble forming and the student loans are clearly there. Well over a trillion dollars in student loans and a lot of them don't want to pay it back. A lot of them want to continue to keep that debt on their books and that's just a matter of fact. I've shown you the polls before and it doesn't look like they'll pay it back. We'll see what happens. To finish this off, to switch gears, I, you know, I cover this stuff at random and it just, it's freaky every time. A Republican donor, an operative from Chicago's North Shore, who said he had tried to obtain Hillary Clinton's missing emails from the Russian hackers, killed himself in a hotel room days after talking to the Wall Street Journal about his efforts. Suspicious, certainly. How many times do we see people that have said they've brought some information to somebody, then they say, okay, I'm being followed, people are watching me, I'm getting the suspicious activity, and then next thing you know, the guy commits suicide. Look at Gary Webb, killed himself with two bullets in the head. If that's not a warning, if that's not a sirens and bells going off everywhere, I, I really don't know what it is. I, I just don't. That's just so stupid. But people are fooled by it, so I guess maybe they deserve it. That's all for this video. If you found this informative, please give me a thumbs up. And last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS, and my new release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. So you can actually flip through the pages of this book. If you go over to Amazon, they have a look inside feature, which will allow you to flip through the pages of these books to see if you like them. Take care.